mind is completely thrown tonight, Holy Spirit. There is a lot of heavyweighty drunken glory increases going on in the heavyweighty drunken glory inside your belly. <laughs> you are Holy Spirit possessed, locked and loaded, ready to be exploded. There's so much of God in you that you are a threat to every single status quo in the entire church. And they treat you accordingly. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. This is just like the Cylon from Battlestar Galactica, except insert the drunken glory beast, hybrid mutants, which is us. <laughs> I got a hard time going through the glory when the glory is so ferocious in the new covenant it's called the threshing sludge with teeth in Isaiah <laughs> yeah new covenant glory in Isaiah that's a lot of glory praise the Lord well I want to talk to you a little bit today in the our alone pirate talk, drunken glory. <laughs> that uh, you might need to understand some things about atmosphere, about discipleship, about sovereignty, about canopy, about domes. What does it mean when Satan's called the prince of the power of the airspace in scripture? Aren't you supposed to be a prince of the power of the airspace? Like King David in Psalms 150, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. <laughs> Operating in sovereignty and sonship. There's only two types of discipleship that go on here. The atmosphere discipling into wickedness, mesmerizing and hypnotizing the masses, or discipleship on mass by the glory of God coming forth through the mature Christians. This is what it's all about. The airspace. Amen. I pray that you would get this revelation of the prince of the power of the air that you are called to be, and you would kick the devil out. <laughs> Amen. What is the air? What is the air? It is the power. The prince of the power of the air. There's a power in the air that dominates the human race. You know, I was just looking at uh, a video clip on YouTube of how almost all the presidents have been interrelated, you know, for the beginning of this country in the United States, and how it's just several families and all this DNA manipulation, and how can just a handful of people be so manipulated by the devil, even some of them, some of them unknowingly. And I went into a vision yesterday, and the Lord showed me that there was a, a brooding. I saw Satan as a brooding mother hen, and he was brooding over demonic eggs and giving uh, birth to like hatching hatchlings and adders and, and all of this stuff. But there was a demonic form of the brooding mother hen that we all know in the glory as the Holy Spirit. Well, listen, if, if Satan's a counterfeiter of everything that God is, the reason why there has been such manipulation in our country and in the whole world for a long time is there's been a demonic brooding going over the DNA of mankind for nearly 6,000 years. And you see this in the seed wars of Genesis and all the genealogies from Genesis all the way to Revelation. There is seed wars going on of a mutated seed line, of a fallen DNA seed line that is like puppets in the hands of the fallen angels. And then you see the righteous seed line, the seed line of faith, the seed line that is born of the incorruptible Word of God in 1 John. And this seed line is the only seed line that can answer that other seed line. I tell you the truth, if a person's not in the glory and the radiation and the fire and the electricity, they can't do anything to make a difference even if they're Ron Paul. Now, I, I'm sorry to all the Ron Paul fans, but you know, unless you're in the glory, you're still operating out of the wavelength 
of fallen DNA and it has no long-term fruits. It's just going to be secular humanism, good thoughts, good ideas at best. I tell you only permanent change will come in the radiation of God's seed inside the Christians maturing. It's not a matter of if they're going to mature, if the seed lines of Messiah will mature in the earth. It's only a matter of when. Which means the, the enemy knows his time is short, like it says in Revelation. Why is he thrown down into the earth, people? Because some Christians finally get their act together and become the princes of the power of the air that they are called to be, taking over the heavens and casting down the spiritual wickedness in high places that resort there. And it's our job to do it. You know, it's in your genetics to do it. People are like, oh, this is work. This is works. This is uh, anti-grace. Listen, your genetics as a Christian is to do the good works prepared before you were formed in your mother's womb to do. It's called your destiny. Your destiny scroll, which is your DNA seed of God the Father inside your heart, wants to do whatever your Father God is doing. Jesus said the same thing in the Bible. I do what my Father is doing. This isn't doo-doo voodoo. This is doo-doo goo-goo. <laughs> Gaga. Childlike faith that gets her done and it is all done by the supernatural genetics of God living on the inside of your spirit. It's all rest and it's all of heaven's best and it will always pass the test so you won't have to be in the wilderness 40 years getting lost and getting beat up by the devil and going through snake pits and dragon pits and getting stuck in the tar pits of hell because you didn't understand the gospel. So it's time to come up the mountain and live on the top of the mountain. Don't settle for one level of the mountain. I'm telling you, a lot of Christians are settling for halfway up Mount Zion because they found this awesome revelation and they just camp out there. Listen, don't settle for complacent satisfaction. There is more. Until you've been to the top of the mountain and have met your Father in heaven face to face, you don't know right. You don't know correctly because there is more. And in this mountain of Zion, of the Father God Himself moving on the face of the earth, there is always more to experience. And the more you experience, the more authority you have, the more you'll be able to introduce people around you into the glory of God. <laughs> and disciple them to into maturity, to produce mature ones that can be superconductors of your Father God's electricity. Praise God. Hallelujah. So this atmosphere that has been a negative atmosphere of of demons and devils and all kinds of witches and warlocks for so long, this atmosphere has mesmerized and hypnotized and mutated human DNA to the point where they are completely brainwashed, completely hypnotized to do the works of the devil even if they don't believe in the devil. Even if they're so-called Christians. Because I tell you what, unless it's Glorianity, it is not Christianity. For Christianity is supposed to be greater glory than 2 Corinthians chapter 3, Moses coming down off the hill, burning and blazing so ferociously that they didn't even need candles, they didn't even need a, to light a bonfire to see this guy. He was glowing in the dark, excess strapto, Shekinah, Yahweh, or burning through his face, shining lion, ox, eagle, man, demonstrating the gospel. For it says that Moses brought them the gospel, but they couldn't hear it because they did not have faith. Hallelujah. It's written all of there in the, the Old Testament, but hallelujah. Now in the New Testament, you don't have a choice to reject uh, God like the Israelites did and perished in the wilderness or you know and then settled for a, a lower priesthood and God gave them the Levitical priesthood listen in the new covenant you can only do it by Jesus Christ of Nazareth manifesting in your spirit through your brain cells and through your flesh into the earth that's why it's the perfect new covenant it is so high it is so high in the spirit that only one man can do the new covenant. Oh, no one else can. It is only Jesus being formed in your flesh. And it is an awesome, awesome thing to let the Lord Jesus Christ be formed in your flesh. Listen, the Apostle Paul said, my entire apostolic mandate was to see Christ Jesus 
formed in you, Corinthians, Philippians, Ephesians, seven churches in Asia, seven continents in the earth. My entire apostolic mandate is to see Christ Jesus, the anointing that produces sonship and maturity and governmental rulership as thrones in the Father's house, you know, ones that become princes of the power of the air, casting down the devils in that place, taking back their inheritance, the mid-heavens, you know, reaching nirvana, which is the mid-heavens, and living from a place of total bliss and rulership and sovereignty, and watching their reflection in all the human race by being seated in heavenly places. Not just metaphorically seated, literally physically seated in that place, and then seeing that your shadow on the face of the earth, just like Psalms 91, God's shadow, now you are a shadow like God's shadow. They dwell under the shadow of your wings, which is Shekinah glory light. Hallelujah. Healing the DNA of humanity by just being on the top of the mountain. Holy Spirit, it's awesome. So be drunk. Be encouraged, be high and lifted up, live the high life. Do not settle for any level that is not drunken glory, high all the time on Jesus, high as a kite, using whatever language you want to, to express freedom and liberty. Listen, because it's not as much about revelation as it is about freedom. Joel's army mandate is the liberation of humanity. It is all about freedom. It is about liberty, showing off the glorious, glorious liberty, freedom that is in Christ Jesus in the anointing of sonship. Hallelujah. That means that you can have fun with words because it's about function, not about form. It's the spirit behind your words. Just make something up. As long as the spirit's powerful behind your heart, you're going to destroy the works of the devil. Hallelujah. The kingdom of heaven belongs to such little children as this that are full of creative genius, just making stuff up with the creative light of heaven manifesting through their bodies. Have fun. It's a renaissance, people. In Jesus' name, glory. <laughs> Shaka, glory. <laughs> In Jesus' name, glory on your life. Listen, I'm done saying fire on your life. I gotta catch myself. It's the glory of God that melts a person like wax. It's the glory. Glory on your life. <laughs> So much radiation that makes Chernobyl look like a 9 volt battery accident. <laughs> so much radiation coming out of the Christians that it makes the recent Japanese nuclear power meltdown look like a 9 volt battery explosion in contrast. <laughs> We don't want a little 9 volt radiation. We want the seven spirits of God enriched radiation of our spirit life through our seven soul gates here. Amen. With so much radiation that your face is shining all the time. People look at your face and blush because it's like you see right through them and they can feel it even though they don't even believe in it. <laughs> they have a hard time looking at your face. Because it's like, what is that energy and power, that virtue, coming out of this guy? It is the Shekinah God burning in your bush. <laughs> but your flesh, your bush, it's not consumed. You burn ever brighter to the full dawn of day. Hallelujah. Until you're burning at 5,003 degrees Celsius in the flesh. <laughs> That's when your heart of flesh becomes a heart of fire, the new covenant standard. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for that new covenant standard. Bring that new covenant standard, and I'll mess them up. <laughs> Most people don't even know this is possible, you guys. Raise the standard in your region. Amen. You can do it. <laughs> Shaka. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's some deep glory. 
I like to feel it in my teeth. The anointing, it's like the nerves in my teeth got shut up with Novocaine. They get all glassy. <laughs> Snorting that glory cane.